next, uh, yes. Yes, and if I go on to the next slide, yes. Yeah. Everyone see that? Yeah. Okay, so we are going to talk about, a little bit about kind of what happens when you go into surgery, but essentially, starting with surgery is a marathon. And I don't know if any of you have had major surgery, um, but you will, if you have, you will know that it is not, it's not just about the operation, which can be, a, is generally a massive toll on the body, but it's also about recovery and recovering well and recovering quickly. Um, oh, so, one of the challenges that we have in surgery is that more than 15% of patients have complications. And this can be chest infections, this can be wounds not healing properly, this can be pain, um, or it can be not recovering and not getting better at all. Um, so one of the things that we look at and think about a lot, um, um, both as surgeons and as anesthetists, is can we as individuals reduce our risk of problems after surgery? Are there things that we can do to make surgery better? And you're all going to know where I'm going with this. Um, I've put up Charles Eugster, who started running at the age of 90 and started weightlifting and doing powerlifting at the age of about 86, I think. Because um, he's a quite, he's, he's an extreme example of, keeping fit, but what can we do as individuals in general is we can all improve our physical fitness. We can improve our mental health and our psychological well-being, improve nutrition, reduce alcohol intake and quit smoking. Essentially, evidence suggests that patients who are less physically fit have a poor nutritional state or poor psychological well-being have worse outcomes after surgery. So if you are not healthy, you are going to find it more difficult to recover and are more likely to have complications. Similarly, evidence suggests that patients who improve their fitness, improve their nutrition, improve their psychological well-being may recover faster and recover better. And what we mean by that is that they have a better experience going through hospital, they have a better experience going through surgery and they experience fewer complications. In other words, we prepare for a marathon why not prepare for surgery and recovery as well? There's an organization or a um, project called the Perioperative Quality Improvement Program, PEQIP, and they collect data on patients going through surgery all over the country. Um, they have 127 hospitals signed up. And when a patient comes in, they ask a series of questionnaires. They collect all of the blood tests, they look at what kind of surgery they had, they look at what kind of anesthetic they had, and they look at outcomes and recovery as well, including um, patient questionnaires on the day of surgery, um, three months later, six months later, and a year later. So not only is this follow up in terms of patient complications and outcomes, it also looks at um, how patients felt about their surgical experience. And they set out five national improvement priorities for surgery and perioperative care. And their number one priority was preoperative assessment. And in that, that includes seeing a patient before surgery, getting to know a patient before surgery, doing what we call an individualized risk assessment. So looking at that patient, understanding their health, understanding their fitness, and assessing their risk going into surgery, but also optimizing their medical problems, optimizing their lifestyle, and trying to get them as fit as possible before surgery. So that was the number one national improvement priority outlined by PQIP in their most recent report. So how do we help everyone? Now, some of you may know about programs we have here at Southampton. Um, we offer specialized support for people going through surgery. So if you have diabetes or if you are severely malnourished or if you have a severe, say, uh, problem with your chest and you need physiotherapy beforehand, we offer specialized support for patients going through surgery to help them 
to improve. We also run a fit for surgery school, um, and that's a half day program that I'm sure you may have heard of um, where we bring patients in, or now I think we're doing it over Teams or over Zoom. We bring patients in and we talk about all of these lifestyle factors that can be changed and we give education sessions and a little bit support to patients. But again, we can't fit everyone into these programs. So what can we do to help everybody prepare for surgery? And this is where we came up to the discussion around digitalized personal, digital personalized prehabilitation. So prehabilitation is rehabilitation, but before surgery. So bringing things forward. So getting people fitter before their operation. And basically we need something that supports patients and clinicians from the decision to operate through to their recovery. That's accessible to anyone at any time and from anywhere. This sort of, this sort of system or this program, we want it to be informative. We want it to be educational. We want to provide assessment that allows people to receive personalized support. We want to enable goal setting, allow people to work with behavior change to improve their fitness, improve their health. And we want it to be multifaceted. So improving psychological well-being, improving physical activity, improving nutrition, helping with smoking cessation or quitting smoking and helping to understand how much alcohol people drink and how to reduce it. But also, again, this is probably, if you've been through surgery, you may kind of be able to em empathize with this a little bit. There's a whole element of understanding the perioperative pathway. So understanding what happens when you go into surgery, uh, what's going to happen before you have your operation, what happens on the day of the operation, what happens after your operation. And so this is where I'm going to hand over to Harry, who's going to talk about my M Health. Thank you, uh, Francis. So um, the company I work with is called My M Health, and we were basically a software company that was founded by doctors. And it was founded by two doctors, actually from Southampton, coincidentally, um, who looked after people who had problems with their breathing, such as COPD and asthma. And what we we are now working with over a hundred of the clinical commissioning groups, so about half of NHS England, um, to uh, help patients and clinicians look after long term conditions, things like asthma, diabetes, heart disease, um, and what we really want to try and do is allow people to access the tools they need to look after themselves better so things like exercises and education um, and having worked with them for a few years we then met the um, perioperative medicine team at Southampton um, and uh, we we're working together to try and take some of those concepts which um, Francis has so um, nicely described uh, and actually build a, a digital tool or an app um, which can which people can access to do that. Um, next slide, please, Francis. Um, so this is our current platform. So we started off with MyCOPD. Um, so that was the first app to be NHS approved and then funded centrally by NHS England. Um, so that's now being used by around 30,000 people all around the country. Um, we then kind of <laughs> diversified out our platform. So we not only cover COPD, we also do heart disease, diabetes and asthma. Now, sometimes people get a bit confused because we call it an app. It's really um, a web app. And what that means is you can access it on anything that connects to the internet. Um, so it doesn't have to be a smartphone or a tablet. It can be, you know, a, a PC, a computer, a laptop. It can even be like a smart TV or, or, or an Xbox or a games console if you, if you happen to have one of those. Um, so basically anything that connects to the internet. And one of the things that we're really proud of is we've actually got a NICE recommendation, if you're familiar with NICE, that's the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, um, and they recommend MyCOPD to be used as part of COPD care for all patients um, uh, in the UK. Um, uh, and we also have a very high um, regulatory standard, so all of our data security um, and information governance is, is, is very, very strong, as you'd probably expect, um, given that we work so much with the NHS. Um, next slide, please, Francis. Um, and so this is what we um, are building. And what I thought I'd do, if we've got 
time is just very quickly actually show you um, uh, what we are um, working on. Um, so if I, I stop sharing. Yeah, um, if I do this, hopefully I'll st steal your screen share just for a couple of minutes and then I'll give it back. Um, but can you all see that okay? Is that showing up? Yes, I've done yes, that. yes. That's, that's what we like. Um, so this, you know, you have to bear with us because it is in development. So it's not as um, slick and perfect and because it's, um, hopefully it's gonna be ready in about, uh, for testing in about a, a month or so. So this is hot off the press. Not many people have actually seen this. Um, but this is what the app is gonna look like. Now you can probably see, I'm just in my web browser on my computer. So again, not on the smartphone or anything like that. Um, and really what we've tried to do is divide the app into three key sections. So body, mind and nutrition. Um, and then each of those sections has a little survey or questionnaire that you can fill in, which allows you to understand how fit you are, for example, and then get advice on what you should do. And then it's got tools you can use um, to try and improve those things. So it's got exercise videos or teach you how to do breathing exercises, for example. What we've also done is we've created this checklist. Um, and this is really the way that you find your way around the app. So you can see each section um, and you can click into here and you can see all the different things which you can do within that section of the app. Um, so for example, your breathing exercises, um, if you could try and do those twice a day, um, then you can, you can kind of tick them off as you go. And if you click on any of these things, it takes you through to that part of the app. Um, so this is the fitness score um, and my test patient is obviously very fit um, and has got a high score. Um, so it gives them advice on what type of exercises they should be doing and, and, and that sort of thing. And if they wanted to, they could also redo their fitness score. Um, so just some simple questions to fill in. And we ask patients um, using the app who are going to hopefully do this every two weeks. So you can kind of track your progress. And if I just give myself a very low score, um, there we go, I'm very unfit and I smoke and I drink alcohol, there we go. Um, and you can see now this has changed. Um, so we're getting different advice um, on, the, on the basis of, of the score that we've put in. Um, uh, so, and then if I just go back here, we just have a quick look into each of the sections. So the body section, um, you've got these breathing exercises which can help you reduce your chance of getting chest infections fitness score, you've got um, advice on smoking and alcohol, and then how to manage other medical conditions. And then supporting everything, we've also got a goal section. Now this is being built as we speak, hopefully um, by the end of next week, I'll be able to show you what it looks like. But um, this is um, what we call smart goal setting. And um, so you can set yourself goals on, you know, achievements that you want to make, or for example, how many times you're going to try and do exercise across the course of a week, that sort of thing. Um, so we're going to have a goal setting module to support everything in the app. Um, we've also got a full um, nutrition course. So again, um, you've got go in here. We've got lots of educational videos that you can watch to learn more about what healthy eating is before surgery, um, what all the different parts of a well-balanced diet are, and and you know how you can set yourself goals to do more of each of these. Um, and we've also got the mind section as well. Um, so we've got a full what we call the mind toolkit. Um, which is a series of videos you can watch which help you reduce stress and anxiety and hopefully get in a good state of mind. Um, and the final bit in here is the education course, which is you know, really important. Um, but this is all what to expect at the various different clinic visits, um, uh, how to prepare yourself to go into hospital, what to expect when you get there and so on. So a series of videos um, to, to help you um, uh, sort of prepare for um, and recover from surgery. That's the idea. Um, so, Francis, do you want to go back to the slides? I just wanted yeah. to give you that as a quick overview. Can you stop? Can you stop sharing? Oh, do I have to stop? Okay. Or I can stop yeah. sharing. There you it. go. Okay. <laughs> I think you can seal it. Uh, now, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Oh. If I go to there, um, and then. Yeah. So if you want to go, um, yeah, so so this is, hopefully I've described some of this, but the idea is that when you first get the app, you'll go through these questionnaires, you'll set kind of set it up, if you like, um, and then you'll start using all the various different tools um, which are in there to help you get fitter. Um, in a later version, what we want to do is then, once you've had your operation, is give more 
post-operative advice so things like problems to look out for um, and and some more recovery exercises that you can do that's going to come um, kind of in a later version we're concentrating on the pre-op and um, bit to start with um, and then if you just go down you can probably skip the next slide and go to 16 francis yeah so this is this is a goal setting module um, which is in development at the moment um, so um, being able to list what activities you're going to do um, and then you can tick them off when they're done um, and, and to kind of mark your achievements as you go along um, so yeah next slide as well okay great yeah so so I appreciate that's probably a little bit of a whistle stop tour um, and provide a lot of information in the short space of time, but um, I think it'd be great to hear initial thoughts and, 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 and uh, comments if anyone's got any questions. So let me stop recording first.